what's going on you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, I want to talk a little bit about this young up-and-coming bodybuilder, Joan Pradells. Now, this guy will be going head-to-head with Michael Crizzo in just a few weeks at the M-Pro Classic, battling it out for that 2023 Olympia qualification. Now, I've seen a lot of posts about this Joan guy since he earned his pro card back in 2022, just about a year ago, maybe a little bit under a year ago. And since then, he's put on a tremendous amount of size pretty rapidly in a relatively short amount of time. And what I've seen lately, he's got these updates next to uh, the 212 top Olympian, Angel Calderon Frias, where he looks absolutely massive. He has really put on some significant size. And going into this M-Pro Classic competition against Michael Crizzo, I think it will be interesting because he's a very young guy. He's got a lot of fresh, new muscle. I think the thing that a lot of people like about this guy is he's got a very small waist. He's got a great V taper. And maybe it's just me, but I personally prefer in the front double bicep pose, those shorter peaked, shorter heads to the peak biceps that he has just look really good in a front double bicep with a vacuum pose on a guy like this with a small waist. I just really like that shape versus a long bicep head. And that's just a very subjective, I guess, personal opinion. But he's also got these really round cap delts. And I think realistically, given his age, given the fact that he only just turned pro a year ago, I can see him having a ton of potential. And I'm curious to see how he does against Crizzo. And I think maybe he belongs in that same conversation as a good veto, as a Carlos Thomas Jr. As some of these young up and coming guys that we talk about, could they be a factor at the Olympia? Could these be guys that take Olympia qualifying spots? Because it seems like in the last couple years, especially with the Andrew Jacks, the Michael Crizos, the Nick Walkers, these young guys, or maybe in some cases not so young guys, but these new fresh guys that come on the scene and put themselves on the map immediately. They win a show immediately. They get to the Olympia immediately. They place top 10 immediately. Could Joan Pradells be one of those guys? I think it's possible, but I honestly think he's going to have his hands full with Michael Crizzo at the M-Pro show, but maybe he goes on to compete after that and maybe wins a show after that. But it would be very impressive if he were able to defeat Michael Crizzo here. But honestly, as big as Joan looks, I think Michael Crizzo is going to dwarf him a little bit. But it's definitely getting to the point now where I'm excited to see Joan take the stage. Like I said, I've seen a lot of hype for this guy since he turned pro. But now that he's really in the midst of his prep, he's getting really close to stepping on stage. I can really see the potential in him. I think he, I think he's shaping out to be a really good pro. And I'm, I, I'm expecting big things from him. I think it is going to probably be between him and Michael Crizzo for the victory there. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about Joan Pradells and the potential that he does have. And Joan versus Crizzo, who do you think is going to come out on top in that comparison? Now, next up in the news, we got a little posing video from Derek Lunsford. This was kind of a behind-the-scenes posing video from the Pittsburgh Pro Weekend where he's with Hani, he's with Chris Bumstead. And one of the things that Chris says to Derek in that video is, what do you do for adductors? Chris clearly impressed by Derek's legs. And this is the same reaction that I had to the recent footage of Derek, both from the actual Pittsburgh pro guest posing and from this is really, it's insane how dramatically Derek has improved his lower body. Cause if you guys remember when Derek first hit the scene, that was the big criticism against Derek is wow. This guy's got this great upper body. He's got a crazy back. Look at his small waist. Look at how, how big his lat flare is even from the front shots, but wow, his legs, they just don't match the upper body. Wow. His legs are undersized to now you've got a multiple time classic physique. Mr. Olympia champ looking at you like, wow, you've got some crazy, crazy muscles in your legs. And I was looking, you know, the footage from the guest posing too, and this footage from the front and really from all the angles, but from the front, Derek's quads are almost a strong point for him now. They look insane. His legs are huge. And that's really one of the biggest things that, that's impressed me about Derek over the last year or so, especially during this transition to open bodybuilding, is how much he's brought up his legs was just insane. Because when he posed for me and Hani um, at the Arnold Classic, we didn't get to see his legs. We just saw his upper body. So I, you can see... How much size he's put on those legs is just, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. Look at some videos of Derek from three or four years ago and look at these videos of his legs now and, and just, it's, it's mind blowing. 
This is what bodybuilding is all about, is picking a body part that needs to be improved, that's a weak body part, and building it up. And that's exactly what Derek has done to the point that that body part is now one of his strong suits. So shout out to Derek on that. Now, next up in the news, I want to talk a little bit about the New York Pro. I specifically want to talk about some of the guys that I feel like are the biggest threat at that show, the primary of which being Tonio, the Predator Burton. The updates from Tonio have been just the most impressive that I've seen from anybody else doing this show. Um, He recently posed for head judge Steve Weinberger over there at Bev Francis Powerhouse Gym. And particularly, he's been showing a lot of the back shots where he looks he looks insane. And I think, honestly, he's the favorite to win this show. And I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. When I saw this lineup, I was actually pretty disappointed. And again, I have to say, no disrespect to anybody that's doing the show. I was just expecting a slightly deeper lineup. And as we got closer to this list being announced and closer to the actual show, I didn't hear anybody any big names announcing that they were doing it. I thought, well, maybe they're just keeping it under wraps. Maybe they're waiting. But no, this this is the lineup. So I think looking at Tonio and knowing his track record, he won the last Legion Sports Festival, I think he's going to win this show. I think he's going to be the favorite to win this show. You know, if you go back and look at this lineup, the most recognizable names are Tonio, Max Charles, and this newcomer, Stu Sunderland, a.k.a. Beef Stew. And even though he's not as well-known, he's not that big of a name, I think he's really a threat for the top three here. You look at the latest update from Beef Stew. I don't think it's ever going to get old saying that name, by the way. But he, you know, he really stood out, particularly in that guest posing with Hunter Labrada. That's really where he made a pretty big name for himself. A lot of people comparing him to Hunter in those shots and saying, wow, this guy almost looks better, if not does look better than Hunter in some of these poses. Granted... He was much closer to stepping on stage than Hunter Labrada was. He was literally about to compete here in the New York Pro. But Hunter is a top Olympian. He was top four at the Olympia in 2021. And for this guy, as new as he is, to look big, ripped, and dry next to Hunter Labrada at a guest posing and look pose for pose pretty good next to him is pretty big for a guy like that. So we know he's got size. He's a pretty big guy because Hunter Labrada is a pretty dense, muscular guy himself. He weighs like in the 270s, 280s in the offseason. And you look at this guy, and he's got a tiny little waist. He can hit a vacuum pose. He's got great abs, pretty well balanced overall. And again, we know he's got the size seeing him next to Hunter Labrada. My two favorite poses of him are actually the first slide on this post from five days out which was the last update he actually posted going into the New York Pro saying he weighs 253.1 pounds. Um, and my, my two favorite poses of his are this front double bicep and the front lat spread. He looks really good and really wide in that front lat spread. And the way he opens up and hits that kind of vacuum uh, front double bicep, I like that pose for him too. And he's got really kind of high inserted calves, but still pretty, pretty decent calves. So while I've talked a lot about Tony Burton going into this show, And while Max Charles might be a much more recognizable name than Beef Stew, I haven't seen really any recent updates from Max Charles, any physique updates that really show us how he's actually looking. We know he's competing in the Masters Olympia. We can look at some of his latest placings from last year um, and say he's probably not pretty far from his peak. Because he's doing the Masters Olympia, we know he's over 40. I think he's in his late 40s. And I think there's a chance that even though he's one of the bigger, more recognizable names in this lineup, there's a chance that he might not be the guy that's challenging that first place spot. So right now, I'm thinking top three in order. Tonio winning. Maybe Stu in second and Max in third. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about what your New York Pro predictions are. I'm going to give you guys... That full competitor list just one more time so you guys can kind of gloss over it. See what you guys think. Slavaj Bedner, Tonio Burton, Max Charles, Leonardis Cardoza, Delfino, Walter R. Debs, Jason Hebert, Mike Halusi, Yosef Kavetin, Kianwu Park, Joe Seaman, Nathan Spear, Robin Strand, Stuart Sutherland, a.k.a. Beef Stew, Brent Swanson, Marius Tomzuk, and Eric Wood. So again, to be completely honest with you guys, more than half that list is pretty unfamiliar to me. Now, next up in the news, we've gotten kind of a slew of Keon Pearson physique updates where he looks pretty much bigger than he's ever been. 
He's 13 weeks out in these updates, and I personally cannot wait to see the next level of Keon Pierce and the next package that he unveils on stage, I think will be significantly improved over the last one. And I think the last time we saw him on stage at the Olympia last year, that version of Keon was significantly above the version that we had seen the year prior. And I think Keon continues to build on that. And based on these updates, he, like I said, bigger than ever. You can't look at this and not say that Keon has put on noticeable, noticeable size from the Olympia growing in, continuing to grow into this 212 division. And I still stand by what I say. I think that Keon will win the 212 Olympia title someday. Before he's done with the 212 division, he will win that 212 Olympia title. I firmly believe it. I think he's that good. And I think really the main thing isn't adding size. I think the main thing is better conditioning. He just needs to tighten up, sharpen up more. And I think that's what it's going to take for him to really crack into that top three. Just sharper, drier conditioning. I think drier is the operative word, not so much better conditioning. A little drier throughout the back, the glutes and hamstrings drier. Overall, I don't think he has to be the biggest guy on stage. And with a guy like Clarita as the guy to beat, that's the standard. It's going to be conditioning that's going to win that 212 Olympia title. And obviously, Keon or uh, Clarita isn't the biggest guy in 212. But I think Keon has the best shape and structure in all of 212. He just got to have the best conditioning or at least better conditioning to win the Olympia title. I honestly don't think there's anybody that has a better front double bicep in 212 than Keon Pearson. It's just an all-around insane pose for him. But I'm really impressed with these updates that we've been seeing from Keon lately. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below about what we've seen from Keon lately. And do you agree? Do you think Keon will one day be the 212 Olympia champ or not? Now, next up in the news, I want to talk a little bit about Sergio Oliva Jr., this latest physique update from Sergio. He looks really impressive. And remember, early in the season, the initial show that he had his eye on was that Arnold Classic Brazil, the Arnold South America. He wanted to do that show, but he had this issue over in Dubai, where essentially he was involved in a traffic accident where somebody died. And although he was determined to not be at fault, he had to go through trial and all this stuff related to that. And apparently, he told me about some fines that potentially he would have to pay as much as $50,000 U.S., and what we do know is that the laws and the, the consequences, the punishments, are much, much harsher over in Dubai. And Sergio's not even able to talk about it because of that harshness. And so I wonder, because Sergio talked about, well, if I'm not going to do the Arnold South America, now I've got my eyes on New York and Cali. He said this very early on in the season when it was still possible that he was prepping for the uh, South America show. So he was prepping. He was planning. He had these shows in mind. So I wonder if there's something preventing from preventing Sergio from maybe leaving the country from competing at the New York or the Cali shows. Because you look at this New York lineup, and again, I don't mean any disrespect to the competitors, but you've got to admit that if Sergio's name were on that list, he would have to be the hands-down favorite with Tonio to win that show. And we haven't heard that he's doing Cali. And Cali's like a week away. And as far as we know... He's still in Dubai. And the caption, again, on this post is just let me get on stage. We know that he wants to compete. We know that he talked about the Brazil show, the New York show, the Cali show. Two shows now have gone by in Brazil and New York that he wanted to do and now is not doing. I wonder if Cali's going to be the same. And I wonder why that is. And I wonder if he finally does get to leave the country, if he's going to explain that to us better. Because I believe when Sergio says, I can't talk about it publicly about what happened to him in jail specifically or what happened with the trial or whatever it was specifically i think that's like legitimately the law you can't talk about what happened so if for some reason he's being prevented from leaving or is not able to leave i don't think he can publicly say that but honestly i'm a huge fan of sergio i'm a huge fan of his physique and i hope whatever issues he has over there he's able to resolve them peacefully and be able to compete in whatever show he wants to do. Maybe maybe the case really is just that he didn't want to do Brazil. He felt he wasn't ready. Maybe he feels like he's not ready for New York and he's just waiting for the right show. Maybe that is the case, and I hope it is. But now that he's missed two shows that he's had his eye on, I am wondering if it has something to do with whatever the laws are or his punishment was over in Dubai. Now we'll have to keep an eye on this Cali Pro lineup because if we don't see Sergio do that show... Then I would be a little bit concerned. 
But he looks good. He looks ready. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about Sergio Oliva Jr. Will he compete? Won't he compete? And why? Now, the final story that I have for you guys today, the legendary pro wrestler and bodybuilder, superstar Billy Graham, has passed away today at 79 years old. Now, it looks like Billy Graham had been struggling with health issues all throughout the year, and apparently over the last five months had lost over 80 pounds while dealing with some kind of infection in his ears, skull, and sinus cavity. And on April 30th, it was announced that Billy Graham had acute kidney failure and also dehydration while battling multiple organ failure. And as of Monday of this week, he was on life support where the doctors apparently wanted to pull the plug, but his wife, Valerie, did not. And we know that all the way back in 2002, he actually had a liver transplant from drug abuse back in the day and then suffered from liver issues over the, over the following decade. So the reason why I wanted to include that in this video, because obviously we don't talk a whole lot about professional wrestling on this channel, it's mostly professional bodybuilding, but superstar Billy Graham, he was a training partner of Arnold Schwarzenegger in the old Gold's Gym Venice. And there's some really famous photos of them together. He inspired some of the biggest names in professional wrestling. When you talk about guys that had incredible physiques, Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner said the majority of his gimmick was based off of superstar Billy Graham. That was his main inspiration. But a more noteworthy one, Hulk Hogan says that his mentor was superstar Billy Graham and a lot of his gimmick was based off of him. And really, a lot of people do kind of tribute Billy Graham as being one of the first physique guys in pro wrestling. Back, you know, back in the day, pro wrestlers were just kind of big guys. They were, you know, kind of chubbier guys, maybe tall guys. But having a built physique wasn't really a very common thing. And it wasn't really something that was strived for until Billy Graham came along. So he was kind of a revolutionary in that way. And I also wanted to include this in this video because I've done a couple videos over the years on Billy Graham and his history, you know, with Arnold, his history with bodybuilding. He did a few shows back in the day, a few competitions, and just all the big names that he inspired. So rest in peace to Billy Graham. Um, that's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you leave a like on the video, a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell notification icon if you have not already. And as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. Alright guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.